Have you ever wondered where all the religions of the world came from? Where all the idolatry and all the false religions came from? But there was a time when everyone in the whole wide world worshiped God and knew God. There was a time like that. When Noah and his family came out of the ark, they all knew God. They were the only people in the whole world. They knew God, they loved him, they served him. And they told their children and their children after them and their children after him. What happened? Well, if you really want to know, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter one, beginning at verse 18. And God himself will explain what happened. He says they knew God, and so they're without excuse, because when they knew him, they didn't glorify him as God, but they turned away from him. They were not thankful, and they served the creatures, the things he had made, instead of the creator. When we went to Singapore in 1954, we found that there was it was a city filled with temples, filled with mosques, people worshiping many gods. The Chinese that were there were Buddhists and Taoists. The Malays that were there were Muslims. The Indians that were there were Hindus. And each one was very devout in his religion. One day, as we were driving along Sarangoon Road, we saw ahead of us a funeral procession. It was Malay people, and they were carrying the, the corpse of a dead man covered in a cloth and laid out on what appeared to be a stretcher. We decided since we had never seen a Muslim funeral that we would follow at a respectful distance. And so we followed until they came to Bidadari Cemetery and they started up the hill. At quite a distance, we stayed behind and we followed them up there. We saw the open grave. And when they reached there, we saw two men unfold a bright red cloth. And one stood at one end of the grave, the other stood at the other. And then they began to wave the cloth over the open grave. Quickly, the man who had the body of the dead man slipped it into the grave, almost as if they were hiding it. And quickly, the people around there, while they were chanting, began to fill the grave in with dirt. It was done very, very rapidly. They filled it in, they filled it in, and very quickly, even as they chanted, they filled it in with dirt, and the man on each side waved the blood-red cloth over the grave. We wondered, what is going on? We had never seen anything like this. And so when we went home, we asked a Chinese Christian friend, what was it? What was the meaning of this that went on? She said, well, I don't know, I'm not Muslim, but I have some Malay neighbors. I'll ask them what it meant. The next day, she came back to us. This is what she said. That man must have been a very wicked man because Allah, looking down, would see his great sin and would judge him. But Allah could not see his sin through the blood red cloth and he would escape judgment. When we heard this, we realized the truth that they did not understand. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Do you remember the story in Exodus chapter 12? When the children of Israel had been slaves in Egypt, for centuries they had been slaves. They had been under the control of the Egyptians, the wicked people, and they had worked day after day, year after year. They had no relief from their labor, no, no special days, no day off. Day after day they had worked and they had nothing but sorrow, nothing but trouble. And during this time, they looked for a 
someone to redeem them, someone to buy them out of their slavery, but there was no one. And finally, God said to Moses to tell the children of Israel, I am going to redeem you. I will send the death angel into Egypt to judge these people who have been so wicked, and I'm going to judge them. But for you, my people, I am going to send a substitute. I will send the death angel through Egypt, and he will come into every home in Egypt, and the firstborn son in every family will die. But for you, you're to take a lamb, a beautiful, white, spotless lamb, and you're to kill the lamb and catch his blood in a basin. Take a branch of the hyssop plant and sprinkle the blood on your doorpost. And when the death angel comes through, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that night, when the death angel came through Egypt, the firstborn from Pharaoh's son to the servant of everyone in the, in the nation of Egypt, in every house, there was death and there was mourning and there was wailing, except in the land where the children of Israel had sprinkled the blood on the doorposts and not one of their people died. And Moses told the people what God had told him. This shall be to you the first month, the beginning of days, because something new has happened. You have a substitute who died in your place, a lamb. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And they went out from Egypt it was a new day. He said, you will always remember this day. This is a special day. Everything is new for you. You will never be slaves again. You have come out of bondage. You have been saved by the blood of your substitute. Who is our substitute? We know who it is. The precious Lamb of God who shed his blood upon the cross. And when we receive him, we know that we have sinned. Who has not sinned? Not one. There is none righteous. No, not one. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when Jesus shed his blood for us, we receive him. When God looks down on us, he does not see our sin. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ, Jesus who died, our substitute, he sees the blood of Jesus, and we are set free. Our first Chinese New Year in Singapore, we wondered why our Chinese neighbors all put red paper, beautiful new red paper, on the doorposts of their houses. And we asked them, why are you doing this? It's Chinese New Year, why are you doing this? Oh, they said, we don't know why. We've always done it. We always put red paper on our doorpost because it's Chinese New Year. It's the first day of the year. It's Cha Yat, as the Chinese say. It's beginning day. And we thought, somewhere in the distant past, they had the truth that God made everything new when he saw the blood upon the doorpost. My friends, has God made everything new for you? Has the blood of Jesus Christ been applied to your heart? If it has been, your new life has begun. He said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, the old bondage, the old life, the old sin has passed away and everything has become new. You'll find the story of, the, of this first Passover in Exodus chapter 12. What a wonderful God we have. He so loved us that he gave us a substitute to die in our place. And his blood has been applied to our hearts. Would you pray for us, Mom? Father, I thank you that you gave your son the perfect Lamb of God who knew no sin, 
to die in our place. Because Jesus died, we don't have to die. Because Jesus took our punishment, we don't have to be punished. Because Jesus rose again from the grave, we have the promise of eternal life. I thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. And I pray for each person in the sound of my voice that they may treasure, that they may appreciate, that they may thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that covers all our sin, that takes away our sin, and that gives us a new life, that gives us a new hope. Thank you, Lord, that you have not left the world without a witness. Everyone may know that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Bless my beloved brothers and sisters. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.